Attack TV fans, we're back out here at Gunsight for a classic small arms dilemma. Bolt action versus semi-automatic 308 shoot-offs. Hooking back up with my good buddy Walt Wilkinson, retired Special Forces Sergeant Major who acts as an instructor here at Gunsight, and we're going to stretch both guns out and see how they shake out head to head. Definitely not going to want to miss this episode of TAC TV. The 308 bolt gun I wanted to use this year on TAC TV is actually a custom bolt action rifle. One of the things I wanted to tap into is a trend that's still ongoing and a few years ago it's really the way you more or less had to get a surgically accurate bolt gun. You essentially took a Remington 700 action, trashed everything but the action and the bolt itself and possibly the trigger mechanism and you sent it off to a gunsmith and he put a high speed barrel on it, bottom metal, custom stock, the whole nine yards, and essentially built it like a lot of guys do a custom 1911. Well, what's happened is that spawned the natural evolution of companies looking at how can we upgrade the action instead of taking a run of the mill Remington 700 action and customize it, let's take that concept and upgrade it. And the one in my opinion kind of defines that concept is Surgeon. They've taken the Remington 700 action, taken it to a whole nother level. Extremely well made, has a built-in Picatinny rail, EDM raceways. They've put a lot of features in it that kind of no matter how much money you spent on a Remington 700 action, you would not be able to put it into the gun. And they've kind of become the benchmark for custom actions for people that have custom bolt action rifles built. So I contacted the surgeon guys and I, I kind of specced out a gun more or less that I saw on their website. This particular gun has a Krieger barrel, one in 10 twist Krieger barrel with a surefire flash suppressor up front that interfaces to a suppressor that I already have in my inventory. My buddy Randy Pennington at Mile High Shooting Accessories supplied the Night Force three and a half to 15 scope, spur mount, my personal favorite, and a stock that really caught my eye when I was looking on the surgeon website, the J. Allen Enterprises stock and they even added the TAC TV logo for the LAV. This is a really slick gun and I can tell you firsthand if you're looking for a custom bolt action sniper rifle, Surgeon is going to be a hard one to beat. All right, for the semi-automatic 308 rifle for this particular episode, I decided to go with the Knight's Armament SR25 carbine. It has a 16 inch barrel and this particular variant has the dimples to lighten it up. Now, I taught a battle rifle class in Florida last November, November 2012, and most of the class, including myself, was running the Knight's Armament SR25 carbines. And to be honest with you, I was extremely impressed at how well the gun shot and how reliable they were. This is a pretty impressive gun, and Knight's has spent a lot of time debugging this thing and getting it up to speed. I know first-handers, guys in special operations, are going to a smaller gun like this versus a full-size M110 or SR25. That allows them to maneuver the gun in confined spaces where if they have to do CQB, they have the ability to do it. Now normally I would run a scope like a Schmidt & Bender 1-4 or something that allows me to get down closer to one power and has a red dot sight, but I wanted to try out one of the new Kale scopes. This is a Kale's 3-12. Kales was a player to some degree years ago in the sniper rifle optic market and for a number of years they got out of it. Just recently they've reintroduced some optics to get back in the game. I wanted to try one out. They've always been world famous for excellent optics. We'll see how this shakes out when I shoot it in terms of actual use. Now of course I mounted it to the rifle with the spur mount, my personal favorite, and I also have a set of the Knight's Armament flip up offset sights. So in case for whatever reason the optic was trashed and you couldn't get it off, you could use the iron sights for close range engagements. If 
five rounds, one at a time. Take your time, focus on the reticle. All right, going hot. Don't think about the next one, don't think about the last one. Last one. All right, let's go measure it. That's a good group at 300. Let's kind of look what we got here. Uh, center to center, three, right on. One MOA group, 300 in this variable wind. Switch guns. All right, going hot. Unload and clear. All right. All right, and as we were discussing, definitely a lot lower. Yeah. We had a lot more variable wind during this string than we did with the bolt gun. Without that one flyer, that's three and a quarter. Mm -hmm. So Pretty still, good. you Not know, a bad group. that's doable. Good, now we're heading over to the 400. Right, we'll start working four to eight. Good, let's do it. All right, Walt, you got me out here on Long Range Ridge. Take me through what's up first. Okay, this is firing point number one, Larry. We use a team, we'll go through and mill these targets, come up with a range, dial that on the scope and engage them. Okay. Now our basic ranges run here from, I'm gonna say 350 to 875. Okay. Anywhere in between those. Each one of these firing points up here has five targets. Okay. All right, so we have to search them, talk, mill it, dial it, read the wind, and then hit Shoot it. Shoot it. Well, you also have another name for this, right? To the students, this turns into Frustration Ridge. Yeah. All right, yeah. targets are a lot smaller than what they do before, and the wind going across from, from this hilltop across the valley to the other ridge line is sometimes, well, always hard to read. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Let's do it. All right, let's get in position. All right, okay, well, Larry, let's start searching for targets. Now I see something right off the bat. Okay, in where's it the, at? Uh, it appears to be a uh, pepper popper shape underneath the tree. All right, I see what you're talking about, right on reference point one. That's 12 inches wide across the chest. What do you mill it at? Like a point seven five, point eight. That puts it right at about 450. Dial 3.2. All right, 3.2. Tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Favor left. Down, point five, left, point five. Whack, good hit. Yes, nice. Okay, Larry, I've got a second target. That uh, juniper bush in the center of reference point one, look at 10 o'clock and you should catch one there. Yeah, I see it. All right. Larry, dial, 3.9. 3.9. All right, tell me when you're ready. I'm ready. Left. Point three. Looks like it was left. Favor right. That particular target's difficult to hit because it's the perfect color of the background. Yep. Plus, for a spotter, if you don't catch the trace, you're not gonna see where the bullet hits in that vegetation. Yep. You're kinda screwed. All right, let's scan for our next one. Now, I see one up at checkpoint two. All right, Larry Dow, 6.7. Got it, 6.7. Shooter ready. Yep. Left, 0.5. Hit. Yep. Good shot, Larry. Nice. All right, Larry, got another target. Okay. The top of the dirt, right at the edge of the woods, there's the log. Yep. You see the target behind it? Yep. All right, let's dial 8.2. 8.2. All right, tell me when you're ready. I am ready. Left, 0.6. Hit. Might have been. I lost the trace due to the uh, muzzle blast on the dirt. Sounded good, though. Sounded good, and I didn't see any kick up. All right, looks good. Larry, I've got our last target. Okay. All right, look behind the stump off center right. Well, it's very hard to make out. It appears to have a green head and a brown body. All right, that's it. Extrapolating. Larry, dial 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6.0. 6
six zero. Left, point five. No joy. Yeah. Left, point eight. Absolutely nothing. Yep. Hard one to hit. No looks background, easy. hard to see. Yeah, it looks like he uh, he's gonna live to fight another day. That completes all the targets here. Cool. Let's That's move. That's a serious course fire. Well, the first lane up here on Long Range Ridge was very challenging. I saw right off the bat what Walt was talking about, calling this frustration ridge. The targets were very difficult to see. With naked eye, to be honest with you, they were almost impossible. You had to get down behind the glass and really search. And he had to guide me into a few or I wouldn't have found them. Remember, we're shooting the pepper poppers downrange. They're only 12 inches wide, several hundred yards downrange. That if you miss it on that particular target, you have no real read on where the shot's going unless your shot went low and kicked up dirt. In that case, we went over the shoulder or over top or around the side, and it basically went into the trees. We had no feedback on where our rounds were going. As a matter of fact, the last target was extremely difficult to see hiding behind a stump, and to be honest with you, I barely made it out. He had higher magnification with the spot and scope and made all the difference in the world. Very, very challenging course of fire. Walt, I'm gonna go way out on a limb here. Say this is position two. You have learned something this morning, Larry. Okay, this is in fact position two. All right, varies a little bit. Targets are a little bit inside what we shot over on position one. They stand out a little more, but still, you're gonna have to work for it. And I can tell you know the wind's picked up. Yes, we've, we've got a half value coming in, uh, eight gusting to 13 or so, so we're gonna have to be quick on the wind call and quick on the trigger. Cool, well I got the bolt gun out here and we're gonna fire it up and see how it rolls. We're gonna need it. Cool. All right, here we go. All right, well. Okay, let's start searching for targets. Okay, right off the bat, there's one down here on the low right. I'm on it. Go ahead and mill it for me. It looks like 0.9. I can live with 0.9. Dial 1.9. 1.9. All right. Shooter ready? Yep. Favor left. Black. Good hit. Thank you. Okay. You had a second target? Yeah, at the base of the tree. Okay, to the left of reference point one, right there, okay. Dial 2.8 for me. 2.8. Shooter ready. Yep. Left, point four. Down, point five. Favor left. Thank Good job. You. That's how it's done. So obviously the first one went right over. Yep, over the shoulder. Got it. All right, Larry, got another target. Yep. Go to uh, reference point one. Yep. From the top of that tree, come up two and a half mils. Got it. Got him right there. Big time. All right. Dial 5.4. Got it, 5.4. Shooter ready. Yes. Left point six. Left point two. Yes. Good hit. All right, Larry got another target. Okay. 14 mils left. See him on the left hand side of the yeah. juniper? Yeah, stripe. Yeah. Dag left stripe. Left dead wood. Good. You're on him. Okay. Dial 6.8 for me. Got it, six eight. Left, one mil. Oh, oh baby. <laughs> Left, point five. Oh, oh man. come on, wind. We're getting killed. Left, point eight. Finally. Yeah, money shot. All right, hey, uh, Walt, I think I got the last one. All right, where at? Okay, down from the last engaged target, go left 12 mils. All right, I'm on it. All right, dial 5.8. Okay, 5.8. 5.8, shooter ready? Yep. 
left, 0.7. We'll adjust as is. Left, 1.4. Left, one mil. Lang. Got it. That's all five. Cool. We've got them all. Second course of fire we hit after lunch. Wind had picked up. Now, one thing that was in our favor is the targets were much easier to see. What did work against us though is shooting across this ravine and the winds got really squirrely, especially the farther out we got. Now, the scalpel handled it pretty well, extremely accurate gun, but it was a very challenging course of fire and it was because of the atmospherics. All right, Walt, before the end of the day, we got a third position, correct? Correct. What I've done here, layer in position three, is set up two courses of fire. The first course of fire, larger targets, slightly closer ranges, which should lend itself to the semi doing better. The second course of fire, LaRue's much smaller and at a greater distance, which should give the advantage to the bolt gun. Now what I've got set up in basic same configuration for both runs, two guys up front in a wedge and three guys back in the back in a wedge. And the theory I guess with the LaRue's is they know there's a sniper in the area and they've gone to ground and obviously they've made themselves a much more difficult target to hit. Right, so what you have is just kind of a shoulders and head size target that what you would actually have if a guy was in the prone. Let's, let's do it. Let's knock it out. Sniper ready. Stand by. Give it more wind. Less wind. Perfect wind. Do it again. More wind. Ooh. That's it. Good shooting. Thanks. We hit some good stuff. That last one got away. Was it wind that got me? You were uh, right and right. You got the rest of them really good. So uh, what was the final time, Dave? That run was just over 27 seconds. Sniper ready. Ready. Stand by. Hit. 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 Going to right. Hit. Far one on the left. Hit. Good shoot, bro. That's why it's called the scalpel. <laughs> Good shoot. Well, that was just over 29 seconds. 29 seconds. Good time. Bingo. Can't beat that with a stick. Walt's master plan worked. Semi-auto versus bolt gun. All right, Walt, you've been around the block. Give me your thoughts right off the top of your head. 308, bolt gun versus semi-auto. Bolt gun, single purpose. That's it, when you have to have a great degree of accuracy. Other than that, that's all it can really do. Semi, it's a multi-mission gun. You have to carry it as part of a team, or you need to put it into a designated marksman role. You have the ability to do both. That's why you see so much in the military, particularly in 308, when they have the option available, they're going more in that direction, and they're getting more and more away from 308 bolt guns. If you have multiple targets, and you're trying to run the action as quickly as possible, with a 308, you're gonna be able to manage the recoil and get on the second target quickly. Now here's the other issue. The very best semi-autos will generally shoot a minute of angle. That's kind of the gold standard for semi-auto 308s. A run-of-the-mill 308 bolt gun will shoot a minute of angle. And many, like this surgeon, will shoot substantially better. Exactly. 
So if accuracy is a premium, that definitely kind of tilts the scale to the bolt gun. Exactly. But if you're willing to give up a little bit of accuracy and you need follow-on shots, you know, then that's where the gas gun comes in. Right, and be a viable member of a team in a firefight. This is not all that great when you've got a lot of targets close range and you need no accuracy. What you need is large magazine capacity. That, that is what an individual needs to have. So as it boils down, no, no surprise here, if extreme accuracy is your requirement, you need to be looking at a bolt gun. If follow on shots with a reasonable degree of accuracy is what you need, semi-auto all the way. Take it from the LAV and the Waltster, baby. Hey, thanks for watching the Vickers Tactical YouTube channel. To subscribe, click here. And to watch some of my favorite videos, click here. Have a good one. LAV out.